This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. WQCS, Fort Pierce. Very pleasant. Good evening. Time for Startup Talk with Mr. Tom Kindred. Well, good evening, Greg, and welcome to another segment and installment of Startup Talk, the show designed to assist and help Treasure and Research Coast residents who want to start, grow, or accelerate their business. And as I always say, what a great place it is to own and operate a business along the beautiful Research and Treasure Coast. We will spend time during our hour together this evening to highlight and create awareness regarding the very powerful and robust business assistance and resource programs that exist right here in our community at our very own Indian River State College. I am Tom Kindred, and I am the Regional Director for the Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. Greg, how are you this evening? Doing very well. Good. Uh, so uh, everything is underway in terms of sports, I believe, at Indian River State College. We are, yes, it is. We are in a new uh, fall se- or spring season. we got baseball going. Uh, we got women's softball going. Uh, we got basketball going. Yeah, and the uh, swimming and diving championships yes. are going to be in uh, wonderful, beautiful downtown Buffalo. Um, yeah. Where do you swim in Buffalo in? Uh, oh, actually, in, in April or when? When does when does the championship take place? It's when? the Burt Flickinger Athletic Center. Nice. And they and this is building is like a fifty million dollar athletic wow. center in Buffalo. So it's beautiful place. Now, don't we kind of exchange that every year? That every ca- other year. Okay, every yep. other year yep. it comes back here and then we go to Buffalo. All right. That's so this right. year's in Buffalo. This year it's in Buffalo. Okay. So. Right. Uh, yeah, that's going to be one through four. The Indian River uh, State College ladies uh, on the softball field, to the surprise of absolutely no one, right. are uh, running away with the state again. Of course. Uh, they're in first place uh, in nice. the uh, Southern Conference. Okay. The guys, uh, they're having a kind of a tough year, but a uh, new coach uh, trying to feel his way along. We do. We have a brand new coach. This is his first season, coach. right? Yep. Okay. Yep. And so uh, hopefully things will get uh, better. And uh, we want to. Uh, Welcome our new listeners to uh, Startup Talk uh, in uh, several countries, as a matter of fact, in France, Brazil, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, as well as Romania and South Africa. And Welcome aboard Startup Talk. So they are, uh, they are listening... Uh are they listening to your sports too? Is that uh, they are. yes? Yeah, that, that's it's, where it's, you're getting them is uh, tuning into the sports broadcast. IRSC nice. is the word on IRSC is worldwide. Nice, very cool. Okay, now it's also uh, we've got a major announcement here. Yes, for, we do. Uh, we have a we have a major announcement. I guess we should I guess we should welcome those new listeners uh, on uh, on a new home for us, uh, along with our our home here at WPSL and WSTU. Uh, we have joined forces with WQCS 88.9, uh, the station located uh, right here at, uh, in St. Lucie County and right here on uh, Indian, River College's, Indian River State College's main campus, mm-hmm. so WQCS. So we are proud and honored to be part of the WQCS family now, uh, and uh, we will be airing Startup Talk on Friday evenings, I believe, at 8 p.m. 8 o'clock. You got yeah. it. Yeah, it'll be so. great. Is that your office, right, a little hut there at the base of the tower? Yes, that, that's that, where that's I work that's right a, there. Yeah. I work there in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a set of hedges there, right uh, <laughs> underneath so. the antenna, yes. Yeah, I, I thought so. <laughs> I thought that was it. Okay. Well, I've been trying to sneak my way over to QCS and, and uh, get in the building. So we, we are uh, – in fact, in the building uh, now through the airwaves uh, on WQCS Very Friday cool. evening. So we welcome all the listeners uh, that will tune in uh, to hear Startup Talk on WQCS. So, um, you know, as uh, as everyone knows who's who listens to us and uh, who's been listening to us and will now who will listen to us on QCS, our show Startup Talk is is dedicated uh, to small business and entrepreneurship and and those individuals that own, operate, and manage these businesses. And I can tell you that uh, there are many 
uh, micro small businesses within uh, Indian River State College and uh, all kinds of people doing great entrepreneurial things on the campus of Indian River State College. And uh, there's no better example uh, of this than the McAlpin Fine Arts Center, which is located right on main campus, right in the heart of the, the main campus. Uh, the McAlpin Fine Arts Center is, is n no different than any other small business in our community. And we have with us this evening the theater director of the McAlpin Fine Arts Center, Mrs. Rebecca Shear. Welcome to the show, Rebecca. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, you, you know, Rebecca, uh, you are responsible for marketing, sales, customer service, scheduling, uh, dealing with the actors, actresses, singers, and dancers. I mean, uh, you are indeed a, a you're you're the CEO of the McAlpin Fine Arts Center, are you not? I like that title. Maybe the salary <laughs> could come with it. That would be great. <laughs> right. Well, we we can work on that. We can work on on some salary to go along with that title. <laughs> So uh, we're, we're happy to have Rebecca here tonight. Going to have a great conversation about the McAlpin Fine Arts Center and, and uh, the business of the McAlpin Fine Arts Center. But uh, first, we'll take just a couple of minutes, highlight a few little local business um, things going on within our community and talk about some upcoming trainings, as we always do. Real quick, I, uh, I was actually uh, at the most recent meeting of the St. Lucie County EDC held uh, back on February the 7th, and uh, quite interesting meeting. Uh, Greg, I think you might have even been there. The results of the Treasure Coast Skills Gap Study were presented at the meeting. Uh, commissioned by the EDC and its partners, the Skills Gap Study uh, was launched back in the fall of 2016 to identify talent groups in the manufacturing, healthcare, and skilled trade sectors in Indian River, St. Lucie, Martin, and Okeechobee County. Uh, they based it on surveys, focus groups, and interviews, and the results were presented at the EDC meeting. Uh, they were presented by a St. St. Petersburg-based professional consulting firm that conducted the study. Uh, the EDC can now use uh, the outgrowths of the skills study in their national marketing campaign to attract new businesses uh, to the area, uh, creating a marketing plan to introduce the advantages of careers in healthcare, manufacturing, and trades. Uh, the next steps, uh, explained by uh, Pete Tesh, will be to engage the community and set the priorities. Um, and basically, Greg, what they talked about at the uh, skills gap study was. About 1,885 new jobs are going to be, uh, we're going to be looking to fill those jobs in the next 24 months. Those are going to be in healthcare, about uh, 1,400 jobs, trades, about uh, 300 jobs, and manufacturing, about another 250 jobs. And you can view the full report on the EDC website at youredc.com. So interesting skills gap study that was presented. I've had uh, several ex-bosses say I was a walking skills gap. Yeah, you were a walking skills gap? Yeah. Yes, that, that sounds about right. Uh, a, uh, a small business with global reach, Remitronics, uh, just received a Career Source Florida grant. Uh, privately held and family owned Remitronics has called St. Lucie County home for 25 years. Uh, the company primarily installs, maintains medical equipment that performs functions such as CAT scans and PET scans and MRIs and x rays. Remitronics was awarded a $21,000 incumbent worker training grant from Career Source Florida as the company transitions to a new software platform. And, of course, we've had Career Source on the sure, show a bet. number of times. Great organization helping businesses just like this. Uh, the training will take place in their corporate headquarters in Port St. Lucie, an office that is staffed by 23. I, and I kind of love the part about um, uh, that came out of Career Source. Workforce training is an essential investment in today's business climate. Upskilling not only increases productivity, but also affords employees the opportunity for higher earnings and better career paths. According to Marcelo uh, DeSantos, the director of the business services for Career Source, and again, Marcelo's been on our show, a skilled workforce is crucial to business longevity. Um, the, the value of working with its partners to access resources and invest in employee training can never be overstated. And, of course, uh, that's a big belief of ours here in the Entrepreneurship Development Institute uh, with our CCTI group that provides corporate you training. Bet. But this company has been in Port St. Lucie for over 20 years, right? 25 years? Uh, called home, called St. Lucie County home for 25 years. Wow. Remitronics. Actually, uh, you know, we've, uh, Remitronics has, uh, has been very good and aggressive about training. So no, no surprise Congratulations. there. Congratulations. That's great. 
And then finally, uh, you know, again, somebody who's been on the show a couple of times with us is uh, Tammy uh, Rugolini from uh, Center State Bank. Tammy's been instrumental uh, in working with the uh, local manufacturing industry. Sure. And Tammy, with uh, Tammy's direction, leadership, and uh, enthusiasm and drive, uh, along with some help from the St. Louis County EDC, we have formed a Treasure Coast Manufacturing Association uh, along the Treasure Coast. It's a private a uh, not-for-profit corporation was established for the purpose of organizing and managing the local and regional manufacturers trade association, uh, promoting the collective interest of manufacturing, uh, the distribution and wholesale trade companies, advocating public policy, and focusing on mutual areas of concern to the industry. Uh, their mission is to promote and enhance established local and regional manufacturing distribution and other wholesale operations. So the Treasure Coast Manufacturing uh, Association, which was established back in June of 2016, recently held a learn and lunch at Indian River State College <clears throat> Excuse me, with a presentation entitled Becoming the Employer of Choice in an Employee Choice Driven Market. So the TCMA uh, hosts monthly factory tours for their members, and the next members meeting will be in March. For more information, you can contact Candy at the St. Lucie County EDC and uh, find out about the Treasure Coast Manufacturers nice. Association. So great new group uh, formed uh, to promote and highlight manufacturing along the Treasure Coast. And you've talked about that several times on this show and the fact that there's so much going on manufacturing-wise on the Treasure Coast, the entire Treasure Coast, right. that 99% of the population knows nothing well, about. Well, you know, we recently had Pete Tesh on yeah. the show, and Pete talked about how this kind of there's this there's this uh, hidden industry out there in manufacturing. Exactly. And um, and the college, Indian River State College, is, is very supportive of the manufacturing industry. We we run the Fast Track to Manufacturing program, and, and uh, the Brown Center has a number of assets and resources in the building that, that support manufacturing. So it really is. It's kind of a hidden, hidden uh, economic driver out there there for our marketplace uh, you know so many people always think of us as an agricultural you know community but a lot of manufacturing has come along in the last number of years and we've we've talked about that on the show a number of times so so that kind of gets us up to speed with some uh, some highlights of business news along the treasure coast uh, real quickly a number of trainings coming up uh, we've got on march the 7th we've got an excellent business plan so this is a course uh, for those who have decided to open their small business or, or maybe they want to change their existing one. Now you've got to take the step to put your thoughts down on paper. So now your idea is expressed as a plan, a living document that outlines all the critical elements of your operation. So an excellent business plan, March the 7th at the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce building down on Midway Road. That's 930 to 1130, brought to you again by SBDC and SCORE. We've got How to Start a Small Business. That'll take place on March the 8th down at the Moorgate Library in Stewart. Uh, that's an evening class from 5 in the afternoon in the evening to 7.30. Uh, have you been considering starting your own small business but unsure of where to start? Don't miss out on this workshop. You'll be provided with information about startup fundamentals, marketing, business planning, financing, licensing, employee issues, and uh, taxation and regulations. So again... Uh, how to Start a Small Business, again, brought to you by SCORE and Small Business Development Center. And finally, uh, on March the 15th, we've got Marketing Your Business. Uh, if you're currently running your business and you believe you're the best kept secret in town or you're just not getting the amount of business you think you should, then sign up for this workshop. Again, March the 15th down at the Moorgate Library in Stewart, again in the evening, 5.30 to 7.30. Again, brought to you by uh, the SBDC at Indian River State College and SCORE. And as I always tell people, the most important details to remember about these training sessions is that the majority of them are provided at no cost. There is no cost to attend these events, nor is there ever any cost to engage the SBDC and one of their consultants. I tell folks all the time, back when I was in business, had I taken the time to become engaged in and participate in the business assistance programs here at Indian River State College, I'm confident I could have been a better manager, owner, and operator. The college, its president, Dr. Massey, and the board of trustees have done an incredible job 
of building what I like to call a very powerful one-stop shop for business and assistance through the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. Uh, the EDI, as we call it, is made up of the Small Business Development Center, the Business Incubation Program, and the Corporate and Community Training Institute. And uh, Greg, as you may remember, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had the uh, the grand opening of the uh, Enterprise Hub. And oh, now, I when think. I talk about one-stop shop, I'm dead serious now. It is a one-stop shop on the Pruitt campus. We have all of those entities and more. Uh, SCORE is in the building. Uh, career Source is in the building. The EDC is in the building. Yeah, just walk down one hallway. You just you walk down it. one hallway Beautiful. and you can get to all of those entities. So you can always get the latest information uh, on the EDI and all the upcoming business training activities at irscbiz.com. Check out the events calendar. And as always, a big thank you to the SBDC and their consultants for the work they do in our business community. So with that, Greg, uh, we're updated on some uh, business highlights. Uh, we, got, uh, we know what's coming up in business training. And now we have with us a... Time to go to the theater. Time to go to the theater. Let's go relax at the theater. I've had enough of the business. So we got with us again. I want to reintroduce and welcome to the show Miss Rebecca Shear. Uh, Rebecca serves as the theater director uh, for the McAlpin Fine Arts Center located on main campus here of Indian River State College. So, uh, Rebecca, kind of start us with your, your professional background. What was your pathway to the theater? Okay. Well, I was born and raised here in Fort Pierce, and I did theater my whole life, but I never thought I would actually make a career of theater. And then my senior year of high school, I was performing in a show, Guys and Dolls, and David Moberg, uh, the theater faculty director at Indian River State College, came and saw the show and came up to me afterwards and asked me if I had ever considered coming to Indian River Community College at the time you're, to you're do not theater. That old. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. And um, I said, no, I hadn't. And he said, well, maybe you should come out and try out and see what you think. And it's just funny. I always look back on moments like that, how it literally changed my life. Um, I ended up attending Indian River Community College for two years on a theater scholarship and performing in shows at that time, and also started working as a part-time employee in the department. And towards the end of my two-year um, AA degree, I started seeing possibilities with the theater and where we could possibly grow. So my 20-year-old self put together a little proposal and went to the vice president of the college and Whoa. gave him my proposal. <laughs> And you are you you Holy are a real shit. entrepreneur. Look at I this. am. And um, are I, you kidding me? <laughs> I suggested how we could form a full time position, and w by doing that, what we could do with the theater. And to my surprise, a little bit, the uh, vice president at the time, Barry Kime, said, "Okay, Becky." And um, but he did tell me. <laughs> he says, "But um, the caveat is you do have to finish your bachelor's degree." And I said, "Oh, no problem." So um, after my two years degree, I did start as a production manager for the theater. And um, while working full time, I then finished up my bachelor's degree at Florida Atlantic University. And that time I realized that I was interested in the backstage portion of it and the business side of it. So I did change my major to business. And um, from there went on to get an MBA. And um, <laughs> look out, Tom. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> I think we have a new I host. I may be out of my element show. tonight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then uh, another huge change that happened in the theater is um, around 2007, one of the people in our department was retiring. So again, my young self decided to do another proposal. So I went to the vice president at the time again and again suggested how maybe we could shift things around a little bit and change my job to encompass overseeing that side of the house as well. What I was doing before was overseeing just the production side, making sure that the shows were up and as best as they could be. Where I was kind of losing focus is I didn't see the other side of the revenue that was coming in and how that translated. So I said I'd like to be over all of it. Um, and again, the vice president said, okay, Becky. And... Um, <laughs> What and was the caveat this time? Um, <laughs> I think he was just like, okay, just do good. Just trying to get rid of her now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably. That's probably it. Wow. And um, so from there, um, 
now the David Moberg and I, you know, when, when we go out to the high schools and recruit students, we often tell them that, you know, I'm an example of I created my own job in theater. And kind of that's what you have to do in the world of theater. As we all know, you can have a doctorate in theater, and that does not necessarily equate to getting a job. It is a very hard world. It's a very hard life. Um, it is who you know being at the right time, place, the right time, having the degree, having the experience. And sometimes you just have to create that job. And so, um, we again, we encourage our students to not only take the theater classes, but maybe take a business class, maybe take some other classes to – you know, uh, right, make Rebecca, them successful. That, that's it. You're becoming the poster child for <laughs> startup talk. I mean, this is great. I what a story. <laughs> that is a great story. I mean, tell so so again, talk to us a little bit about the, the facilities there mm-hmm. for people that have never. It's a, it's a great <clears throat> facility. And, and how old is the McAlpin Fine Arts Center? How old is that facility? Well, we do have two theaters on the Fort Pierce campus. Of course, the McAlpin Fine Arts Center is our large theater. It's a proscenium theater with 637 seats. And it was built in 1980. In um, 2004, we did do a $1 million renovation just to the front lobby, and we moved the box office over there. And that was part of this whole bringing us up to the next stage of, you know, being a respectable professional theater, um, making it handicap accessible, brightening it up, sure, right. um, making the box office bigger because at that time we wanted to expand, but we needed a bigger box office. So that was one of the steps in that process. Also around that same time, uh, we um, built the Wynn Black Box Theater and the Feed Dance Studio that is just adjacent. Um, And that allowed us to have a second theater, which means we kind of doubled our season at that time. So we were already doing, you know, 10 to 12 productions each year just in the McAlpin. By bringing on another theater, we upped that to about 18 productions during the year. We are uniquely positioned in um, how our college has set up our department, and the money that we make at the theater is what kind of funds our production costs and even certain people's salaries. So having that extra theater over there allowed us to really grow the productions and everything. Now with that comes the negative side where you are then – you know, you have to do the shows that the people want to see. You have to do, do a certain amount of shows. You have to do a certain quality show. So it is a business in that if our customers don't like what they're seeing and they don't come back, we don't have a program. Right. So we definitely listen to audience feedback. We do lots of research in the community what they want to see. Our audience is very unique in that um, they are more towards the 78, 80 years age. So, you know, what is it that they want to see and um, making sure that we deliver a high-quality production for what they're paying. Notice she was looking at me when she <laughs> said 78 <laughs> to 80. You know, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not, that's a good thing. Yeah. She wasn't looking at me. That's good. Uh, so, you know, again, you know, talk a little bit about the uh, your role as the theater director. I, you know, you and I have. You know, I talked a, a little bit about the business aspect of all this, and you know, you you wear a lot of hats at the theater. So, talk a little bit about your role as as the theater manager. I think ultimately everything I do co- ties back to the money side. So, I do oversee the box office. So, w- I make sure that you know the ticket sales are coming in and everything is being reported correctly in the auditing side. I oversee the marketing side, so people know about our shows. The the, the I work with our institutional advancement office there, of getting the flyers and the postcards and the WQCS radio spots out. And things like that. Um, I work with still the production side, making sure we have the costumes, the props, the instruments, and everything for our students. But one of the other sides that I do that's kind of unique is my employees are our students. Uh, we have about 150 performing arts scholarship students in our program. So we are paying them to go to school, but in that, they then work for us. They're the ones that perform in these shows. But if they're not performing, they're working for us. They're building the sets. They're painting the floors. They're ushering the shows, whatever. So when people say, how many people do you have work for you? I say about 200 between the staff and the students and everybody because that's how we get all the work done to make all these shows happen is the student body. So the Performing and Visual Arts Department does consist of theater, instrumental music, vocal music, dance and then the visual arts so with again within those about 150 students on scholarship now not all of these scholarship students are majoring in the performing arts another unique thing but again I tell the students 
this is kind of your job while you're in college. We're paying you through a scholarship, so we're not necessarily giving you a paycheck at the end of the week, but we're paying your tuition. Now you're going to sign this contract, and you're going to work for us. And again, I do the assignments each week. Maybe this week you're the lead in the musical. Next week you're sweeping behind the stage and painting something. But again, we do it as a real-world venture that this is probably what your life is going to be like in the theater. You will be at the top of your game one day, and then maybe next week you'll be back to waiting tables or whatever. And you ha- having that experience at the college allows them to get these different techniques from helping build the sets to the lighting and hopefully at the end of the day get them employed somewhere. I was going to ask you about the behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the building of the sets is, is a whole mm-hmm. business almost oh, to yeah. itself. We do have two full-time staff people that actually, um, they're considered the technic- technical director okay. and the assistant technical director. One, her specialty is lighting, and the other one, his specialty is sound. But at the end of the day, they ultimately oversee the facilities as well and the construction of the sets and designing the lights and designing the sound. But they then work with the students to make all the, s- you know, the students are the one actually running the light board and running the sound board. And these aren't classes necessarily. Again, it's part of their workload that they're teaching them through that way. That is so cool. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about the degrees uh, mm-hmm. in, in performing arts at, at Indian River State College. What, what can a person acquire mm-hmm. in terms of a degree? Well, yes, Indian River State College, we do offer bachelor's degrees now, but in the performing and visual arts, it's still just an AA degree. So students wanting to actually majoring in theater, music, art, or dance would come to us, do their two-year degree, but then transfer to a four-year university to finish that degree if that's what they're ultimately wanting to major in. And honestly, during that two years, though, we do counsel them and say, why would you ever want to be a theater major? Because, again, (laughs) it is just a very hard world, and we don't ever want them to walk away saying, I can't believe they told me I should be a theater major. So if if that's what they ultimately want to do, we try to advise them, and you know we work with the other universities on a transfer and um, placement afterwards. But um, we also say, hey, come to the college, take an acting class, take a dance class, perform in our shows, be on scholarship. But why don't you major in business? Why don't you major in education? You know, something like that. You yeah. know, just to give it's not a backup plan. It's just being realistic. So I mean, y- you know, I didn't even think of that as one of your jobs, but. I mean, you're also really close enough to these students. You're you really are acting as a mentor, mm-hmm. as a as a counselor. I mean, mm-hmm. you're they technically the scholarship students meet with me first to look over their schedule, their classes, and number one, making sure they're all in the performance classes that they need to be if there's particularly a, a performance major. But then again, with even the scholarship, we do make them take certain technique classes and things like that. Not all the classes, but some. And then I sign them off a little piece of paper, and then they actually go meet with an actual advisor to make sure their academic side. When they sign a contract with us, it outlines in there, we still want them to make sure they're getting their degree. So in that, they can't just come here and take all theater classes. Sure. They have to be taking their um, gen ed classes, so ultimately you know, they get out right. and move on with their lives. Uh, talk about the facilities in terms of, of programming. I mean, between the McAlpin and the and the 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 Wind Black Box. I mean, what can you do? Per, you know, can you can you pretty much do any type of production? We can. We are very very fortunate in Indian River State College with our facilities. I mean, they are state of the art. We have awesome equipment, awesome staging, and again, in theater nowadays, you have to stretch the boundaries and with that last year we did the show Frankenstein and it was just an awesome experience I mean the people felt oh good did you see it I mean to use some of the technology we use in that we had never done before and I think that's one thing about theater you're constantly having to research and stay up with what's going on in the world and and not only offering the what the people want to see but showing it in a different way maybe they've seen Oklahoma 20 times but we're gonna do it different and between the two facilities we call the McAlpin our money maker because that's where you know you're getting this past week and we had Mana La Mancha it was completely sold out the entire run realistically that makes about forty five thousand dollars now granted theater is an expensive business it costs us about twenty thousand dollars to put it on and that additional revenue again goes to pay for other production expenses throughout the year from the scholarships because we pay the scholarships certain people's salaries uh, rights royalties costumes pencils cameras (laughs) cameras <laughs> every i mean everything you can imagine um right. just so. because i have a lot of fun with music rights organizations yes <laughs> yes <laughs> dare i even ask what a theater run of a show would 
Well, I can. I just came off Mana La Mancha, so I can do <laughs> exact numbers with that. Just to get permission to do a show like Mana La Mancha was about seven thousand dollars. That's just so permission. That's and yeah. nowadays, particularly with the internet, um, a couple years ago we had a show where we said we're going to run it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. We would pay the rights and royalties based on this. Well, at the last minute, it was decided because it sold out. We would do an extra performance, and I I was going to pay. But uh, we put it on the internet, Uh-oh. and man, I got a phone call that day <laughs> from the rights, and we're like, oh, you didn't pay this. I mean, the copyright police yes. were on I, I was going to pay oh it, but I, they didn't even give me a chance. It was like, wow. Not so. a surprise. It, 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 and it always does surprise me, Greg, and I know you deal with it all the time oh. in the radio business. How, how do they even know? I, y- I don't know how they knew before. They algorithm out there <laughs> that picks up the, the name of the show. Yep. Yep. Quite wow. amazing. Now, again, I think you've answered – the question, but again, so everything you do at the McAlpin in terms of performances, are they all manned by students? They are not necessarily. Okay. I mean, David Moberg, uh, John Southall, Dale Reith, and Molly McGee are our full time faculty that teach the classes and then ultimately direct the show. So if it's a variety concert, you have Dr. Dale Reith and Dr. John Southall as part of the class, getting these students ready for a performance. And then when it comes to show night, though, we do have, um, it's a mixture of staff and students running the actual event. I'm there, you know, mostly doing the front of the house stuff. Um, But we try to also allow our students to run the light board, run the soundboard, because that's awesome, awesome experience that many students that even go to a university are not going to get that until like they're senior year of actually getting their hands on and but we look at it as no we need you because we're doing so many shows we need them to run these boards but most of the time the students are the ones performing in the show that, that's yeah so, so it really it, w- when we come watch a show at the yes. McAlpin we're really watching students I mean we're yes. th- those are students that are engaged in the program yes part- right. man of La Mancha this past weekend it was all students that most of them were all on scholarship you know, 18, 19 years old, and I mean, so many patrons came up after the show to me, and they're like, are you serious? Are these really 18-year-old students? You swear <laughs> these aren't Broadway <laughs> actors here? And I mean, I, they are like my children, and I love them to death, but they are just amazing. I mean, they are so talented. They come from all over. I was going to say, do, you do a lot of, y- are, are a lot of them local, local a students? A lot. Or? Most of them are local, but we do get some um, from Orlando, Tampa, Miami, um, we actually have one young man right now from Ohio that he said, hey, I heard about your program, and I would love to come. I was like, all right, come on down. You're going to pay out-of-state tuition, but be my guest. And um, right. But, no, these kids are just so, so talented. You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that, you know, with the WPSL Christmas kids, we have groups from all the schools entertained. But the, the ones that really stand out are the Port St. Lucie High Drama mm. students. And usually before they go to New York, you know, every, every every December, um, they will do one of our shows, and you see the the projection, and you realize these kids are on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, and it's different. You know, it's it's marvelous. Do, do you kind of does the McAlpin uh, reach out and partner a little bit with like uh, like Greg says some of these local drama clubs? Is that, is that well, I I am. Are pretty much friends. I am a recruiter. That's one of so my jobs too. Yes. <laughs> I'm, th- next you're you're week, like Bob O'Brien out yes, there looking yes, for the best yes, pitchers. Yes. I mean, yes. yeah. Um, and okay. I, now I've been at the college now for 16 years, and so I have built that relationship with many of the. I mean, Pat Madden has been at Port St. Lucie High School. I think sure, like going Patrick, on 30 yeah. years. Um, my husband was a student of his. I go and see all of his shows. They bring. All those guys bring their students out to see our shows. But, yeah, next week I'll be at LPA recruiting. I'll be at Vero Beach High School. And I go out there and talk about the program. Again, I don't have to do as much nowadays because, again, all the teachers know us, know our program. But I still like to go out there and just, you know, give a different spin on what sure. we're currently doing. Now, do you take – do you do some uh, – do you do some outside performing? Will you take, a, a, a you know, your – choral group or something out in the community and do things around the community? We do. Uh, Dr. Reith takes his group out, but one of our most popular things that we do is our murder mystery dinner theater tours. Um, We have a huge waiting list every year because between all the shows we do at the college, we just don't have the time to do many more, but we usually tour about 15 murder mystery dinner theaters tour. They are extremely popular. We go to places like Spanish Lakes, Um, The Pelican Yacht Club, Sunrise Theater Black Box has even booked us before. Uh, Many community events, retirement communities that will book us to come and perform the show that evening at their 
organization while they do the whole food and everything. Um, That's we've been doing cool. this for about 10 years now. It started w- as a part of a grant project we were working on. The students love it because, again, it's just a whole different type of acting. I mean, it's very improv. They have every single night's a different audience depending on their reaction and things right. like that. So, um, And that's actually going back to, you know, 30 years ago, how David Moberg cultivated the audience that we had today was doing shows like that. He would take them out to the communities and then pass out flyers and then bring them here. But since then, I mean, our audiences nowadays, uh, we don't have to market a lot just because they are season ticket holders. They buy their seats at the beginning of the year, and they've had those same seats for 25, 30 years. And um, word of mouth is just a huge one, you know. So, again, I think that talks to our quality of the productions we do because they keep coming back. Talk about uh, how does how does any River State College uh, program and facilities. How do you compare, kind of, to other state colleges? Is this uh, something that's common on state college campuses? Not that I'm aware of. Um, several years ago, I was on the FCCAA uh, theater board, so I did go around to several other of the community and state colleges at the time and help advise on the different theaters. And at that time, we were very, very unique. Um, I'm not sure if since then people have kind of adapted our model. Um, I've had people call over the years asking about it. Um, again, it's, it's hard. It's, it's taken 30 years to build what we have now. And we are, again, uniquely positioned in this community uh, we are not competing with the Kravitz Center or anything like that. So people want to come. They want to see a great show for $15. And um, it's our audience ha- that has allowed us to do what we're doing today. And, um, again, we have a unique take on the our philosophy is the best way to learn theater is to do it. So instead of off- offering acting two, three, and four, we make these kids do show after show after show after show. Right. <laughs> That's well, great. Well, and, you know, uh, that's a great point, and, and it, it really is the same thing. You know, we've had this conversation, of course, with the uh, IRSC School of Business, and I'm always so impressed with with the School of Business and, and how we really do try to get those students engaged in real-world mm-hmm. uh, activities and get that experience. And, of course, the School of Business is very aggressive with their internships and mm-hmm. their capstone projects and uh, the, the money show that they take them to and then mm-hmm. you know the 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 finance club and the the investment club that we've had on the the show and so they really do go out of their way to make sure these kids are and students are getting real world experience and i mean it, it's i think it's no different than what you're doing in the theater i mean mm-hmm. you what a great i mean not only are they getting their degree but they really are leaving with some incredible experience i mean a, a, a typical student how many shows might they perform in as they get their their two-year as degree usually within the two years an average student will perform in at least 12 to 15 different productions wow. and again wow. um, two years yes in, in the two, two years, years they're gonna be in 12 productions oh, which God. i have oh. been around where i have spoke with you know, local drama teachers and things like that that will say, I got my degree from so-and-so. I spent four years there and performed in one show. But I swept a lot of the stages. And again, I think that's what makes us unique, that we are giving these kids real-world experience. Sure. And from the variety of the shows we do, from the musicals to the straight shows to the comedies to the Greek historical pieces that we do, like Ghost and Henrik Ibsen's pieces, but then also the murder mysteries. Um, We are making these students well-rounded that hopefully they can get a job somewhere, whether it's in children's theater but the murder mysteries are very popular in the bigger cities. So um, if this is what they want to do, we're trying to line them up to make that happen. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit again. Our show's you know, dedicated to small business and entrepreneurship, and it's obvious that you, you really have taken, you've taken what really was a, a kind of a textbook academic program. And, I mean, you really have brought a, a, a tremendous sense of entrepreneurship and, and business skills to, to running this operation. Uh, you know, so talk again a little bit about, I mean, you've got to deploy standard business practices. I mean, you, you've got to go market this thing. You've got to go, you know, deal with advertising. You've got to deal with sponsorships and, and ticket sales. I mean, talk about how all that comes. And do the students kind of help with that, too? Are they getting that, that also that some of that business experience? A little bit on that side. Again, 18 and 19 year old actors, they all think they're going to be actors. So right. none of them really want to focus on the business side of it right. quite yet. Right. Now, many of them at like 25 and 26 will come back to me and say, hey, now I'm going back to get an arts management degree. I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> but um, I think one thing that's unique with our department is we plan a year and a half to two years out. 
we are, you know, thinking about researching shows and because, again, rights and royalties requests, the way the season lines up, everything is done way in advance. And when even when I say the research, I mean, we're reading the scripts, we're discussing it in the department, we're polling our audience, we're giving surveys, and um, that's, I think, very unique in our program. So how do you poll your audience? We several different ways. Uh, back in the old days, <laughs> we would literally do just a handout card at like the big musicals and have them fill out. Then Becky was, of course, in her office going through thousands of little <laughs> note cards. So I quickly yeah. uh, progressed to the surveys online and uh, Facebook and things like that. Um, now, again, our particular audience, um, you know, 6,000 people will visit our theater, and I was getting a response of about 200 um, survey results. So it's not a huge um, test pool. But um, then from there, I would just start talking to our patrons. And even this past weekend at Mana La Mancha, I would pull some patrons aside because now I know them all. Mm. And, um, hey, what do you think about this show? Would you like seeing it? And they have no problem telling me the truth. And, again, part of my job is I get letters from the communities with, yes, we liked it, no, we didn't, and things like that. And I'm, I've had to grow a tough skin over the years getting, <laughs> you know, because in my mind, it's those my children up there performing. And sometimes, you know, not every show is a hit, so people will tell me. And um, <laughs> but I have to take that because again, in a real business, well, you would yeah, get that. Right. So. Hey, not every real business, not every batter hits yeah. a thousand. Yeah. You know? But it was all—it yeah. was always with the intention of trying something. Um, it was never like, well, we're just going to do this show, and we don't care if they like it. We never go in with that attitude because again, how we are funded, we can't take that chance. So you know, uh, you've you've touched on it, uh, you know, a little bit about the the surveys. You used to do them. You know, with cards, and, and now you've gone to, to more uh, sophisticated means of doing the surveys. Talk a little bit about marketing. I mean, because that, you know, that marketing is such a big part of this, and, and our community is so diverse. You know, we've, we've got a, a little older population. You're dealing with an older population. You know, how tough is marketing? How do you get the word out about, about theater shows? We work a lot with our institutional advancement office and doing the print material, of course. We, in the last couple of years, I think, have made a huge push with any online calendar possible from macaronikid.com, which tries to really get, yes, yeah, if you're Who not familiar, what? <laughs> what? I highly Who recommend what? it. Macaronikid.com? <laughs> Macaroni Kid, yes, and it's a oh. great website that lists all the activities in the area specifically for family and children. So if we're doing a show, it's this great. year we did Cat in the Hat, and um, we sold out all three performances. And I think one of the huge marketing things we did, and it's free. I mean, we just upload that this is the show, but all of us young mothers in the area know to go to macaronikid.com to find out. That, and it's I, that, that, that's it. I'm not a young mother, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the TC, you know, online, what's going on this weekend, Treasure Coast things to do. We take advantage of every single online um, forum possible. Uh, we do have our own uh, Facebook page. We do have, um, about 10 years ago, we did invest in online ticketing systems so people can purchase tickets online. Again, even to this day, it's still not a huge way. Of people. Most people do either call the box office or come in person to purchase their tickets. Um, but you do have the option now of purchasing tickets online. So is this like a Ticketron type thing? It, or? We use Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our, our box office, so I also oversee uh, ticket sales for our planetarium, um, so um, sure. which is a very popular. And that, that is, it is two separate audiences, though. We, uh, we obviously market to both between our – we um, have the constant contacts, um, email blasts. That that's more one of the recent new things we've been doing lately. That's smart. We that's very smart. Yes, yeah. and yeah. that – Capability has now allowed us to track it a little better of who's opening it, and um, we I would think that's one of our biggest thing in the last couple of years. That's something that has changed. We do um, market campus wide with online um, emails and posters and things well, like I, that. You know, I feel like I'm very informed. I mean, you guys do a great job with on campus. I mm -hmm. I I know about everything that's going on <laughs> at the theater. So it, you do a great job on campus. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, definitely the word of mouth. Our patrons, oh, my friend, because we ask them when they purchase a ticket, you know, at the one of the last steps is, how did you hear about the show? And, I mean, most of them will say, oh, my friends at Ocean Village told us that we had nice. to come down here. And, again, but most of them um, are people that have been coming for a very long time. So I always love meeting the new ones, though. So <laughs> talk to us a little bit about how – how can one get engaged now do you have a do you have a season ticket you talked about having season tickets so 
are, are those repurchased every year by kind of the same people? Can can new people have you got some open seats or is it? Are just, these are willed told, like the Washington yeah. Redskins tickets? Is this right? A, do you have to will yeah. these to your to your second generation or something? How how tough is it to get a ticket? You know, actually, back around 2000, 2001, uh, you really couldn't get a seat. Um, and then, unfortunately, when the hurricanes hit us, um, not only was our theater hit very hard, uh, the actual facility was damaged. Um, many of our patrons uh, lost their homes. Oh, boy. Um, relocated. Um, so we really experienced hard times um, for a couple of years. We wow. literally had to rebuild our program. Um, it was sad time too. You know, we lost many patrons that had been, you know, season ticket holders for many years, and w- wrote us letters that, you know, we're going to miss this, but we are having to move in with our kids in New York or whatever. Right. Um, so that was a good learning experience for me. That again, how we are a business, and, and how, how quickly things can change. And how you know, quickly yeah. things can change. Right. Um, well, how much damage did you guys have? Physical um, damage. The theater itself. We had just finished the one million dollar renovation, and pretty much most of the lobby was destroyed again. Oh. Uh, we had to redo the flooring. The roof, you know, was thirty years old, and um, so we had some leakage on the actual stage itself. The pit, which is the on the stage, it goes down into the ground. The orchestra. The pit. water level had come up and messed up a lot of that. Oh boy. Um, it was we we recovered the space rather quickly um it was the patrons though that hit us really hard for several years um and honestly i mean we're i would say just in the last three or four years are we really starting to recover from that completely all right so so the word is quick Yes. Get out and get your ticket. Yes, yes. Uh, this particular year, we saw a huge increase. About um, 150 additional season tickets were sold. I mean, we have about 700 that are season ticket holders, but uh, every year was pretty consistent about how many we had. And this year, we saw a huge jump. Uh, one thing I think that was attributed to is we did do a little bit marketing redesign of our season brochure where we really highlighted. I had s- I looked at it as an outside view and said, you know, every year we do it for somebody that knows what they're doing. I said, let's look at it in a way that people that don't know what it is and really focus on why you should get a season ticket. Um, The season ticket picks seven of our biggest shows and allows patrons to select all seven, get the same seats, uh, for all seven shows at a discounted price, so is that, that is very am I popular. Reading that correctly? Yes, that is correct. They get seven shows for seventy dollars. That's yes, ten dollars. <laughs> you can't go to a movie. No, I was for ten dollars, much less a live performance. The college has blessed us with allowing us, obviously, the facility and things like some of the overhead costs, like staff and things like that. So we are able to offer these top-notch productions at a very reasonable price. If you don't buy a season ticket, you can get them at a fifteen-dollar rate. So it's a little bit of an upcharge. And then uh, we do offer several other shows, both in our Black Box Theater and in the McAlpin, that are not part of the season ticket. But even if a subscriber chooses to attend one of those, they can also let us know that they're a season ticket holder, and they can get those additional tickets for $10 instead of the $15. This year, like I said, we did try to offer more of a family-friendly show with Cat in the Hat. Um, It was very successful. It was in the Black Box Theater, so it was a little trial event. But all we actually we had scheduled two shows. Both of them sold out instantly, so we did add a third show, and it also sold out as well. So, wow. so how does someone get engaged? A mm-hmm. Website or call you, or how does all that take place? Yeah, on the college's website, www.irsc.edu, there's a link for visitors. You can go on there, see all of our show information. You can purchase tickets online. There's also a button on there where you can sign up to be on our mailing list. Uh, that is a very popular feature that we started a couple years ago, and I'm stunned every day at how many of those I get constantly, new people signing up on that. On the mailing list. On the mailing list, yes. And then once we have them on their mailing list, you know, they'll get the emails, they'll get phone calls, they'll get posters in the mail. Um, but you can always come in person to the box office on the Fort Pierce main campus Monday through Friday from 11 to 3 to purchase your tickets. You can call us over the phone. Now, um, when, now when, do, when can someone, when does the season start, I guess? When does the your actual season starts in October, but season tickets and renewals, anybody that has a season tickets will get first priority to renew there, and that's what most of the good seats are already taken very quickly because those people will do that usually in July and August. That's when okay. we renew our season. And then in later August, September is when we'll do individual ticket sales, so you are getting first priority with seating by being a season ticket holder. And then um, – 
the individual tickets will start in September, and then the first show usually happens in October, and then we'll run October, November, December, January, February, March, and April, and then we have a separate season, which is considered our summer season, that runs May and June, and then the theater is dark in um, July and August. That's so when we I, all recover. So if I want, so I could, so I could order. What what month are we in now? I don't even. Where where are February. we? February. Everything we're, is sold out. We're in spring training for baseball. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so we. Uh, so could I buy my season ticket now? Could I buy my seven shows now, or no? I'd have to wait until no, the because summer. you would be a new subscriber. So our oh. returning people get first priority first. So okay. in August you could be a so new in season August ticket. August I could join as a new yeah. subscriber. We're newbies. Yes. All right, I'm going in August. I'm going to get my. Seven shows for seventy dollars. Yes. That that's amazing. <laughs> I won't even tell you. I went to the theater the other night to a movie. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I won't even tell you what we spent. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> do, what What do you get for popcorn and coke? Um, uh, you don't sell popcorn and coke. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you, maybe that's a maybe that's a new venture for you. And that's the other thing about our theater is when the show starts at seven. Yeah. The show starts at seven. <laughs> I think uh, nowadays our movie theater life has made us think that it's okay to arrive 20 to 30 minutes. No, yeah, no, no, no. No previews? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Most theaters start promptly on time, so okay. I'm on a mission to retrain the world. <laughs> well, Rebecca, I got to tell you, I wow. am just, I am flat impressed, and uh, and I just I can't say enough about uh, about what you've done uh, with the program at Indian River State College and the, the Fine Arts Program and the McAlpin Center and the, and the launch of the the Win Black uh, Black Box Theater, and and again, I love the I, way she started her career. I, I, well, I know, I, I'm telling you, you you, oh I, you need to come speak to a couple of entrepreneurship uh, groups and yeah, uh, because it like you said, uh, for so many folks, it, it you really do sometimes have to go out there and create the job, mm -hmm. and uh, it sounds like that's exactly what you did. You saw the potential in the mm -hmm. facilities and the program, and you created the job. So. And now I have a job in theater, which is very awesome nowadays. That's, well, so. great. <laughs> All right. So with that, we will uh, we will end another uh, segment of Startup Talk. I want to thank our guest tonight, Miss Rebecca Shear. And uh, all the folks at the McAlpin uh, Fine Arts Program. And remind everyone that all the business assistance programs and resources discussed on this segment are available through Indian River State College's Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute, engaged at every stage of enterprise. For more information on the EDI, its programs, and a complete listing of upcoming business training events, visit irscbiz.com. That's irscbiz.com. As always, I want to thank our, our partners here at WPSL, WSTU, and WQCS. Um, and always want to thank Michelle Abaldo and her team at IRSC's Office of Institutional Advancement. So with that, we will bring to close another segment of Startup Talk. And uh, Greg, have a great uh, week, and we will uh, talk to everyone uh, next week on Startup Talk. That we shall. And uh, wow, what a week. It is, it's been an amazing week. And uh, we'll see you again next week, my friend. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. WQCS Fort Pierce.